Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Dave Tyson on Executive Cybersecurity. This is a new series. Apollo Information System is kicking off to help executives navigate cybersecurity problems. I'm here with Dave Tyson, President and Chief Security Officer of Apollo Information Systems and Co-Chair of the Cybersecurity Initiative for the Private Directors Association. Thanks for coming, Dave. How are you? I'm well, and thanks for having me, Mark. That's great. Well, uh, today we're going to talk about the perils executives and board members face when trying to find the right cybersecurity advisor, which is, of course, a big topic that we need to unpack. So let's look at it a little closer. Uh, board members, executives, they know they need a solution and uh, they know that they need help on cybersecurity, but you know they don't know what they don't know. How do they make the right choice? How do they make the right call? How do they avoid the pitfalls? And you know what should they look for? Yeah, I think it's a great question. And I think that, you know, first we start from the point of view that, that, the, that you know, security doesn't ever stand still. And all of the surveys out there have said that board members and senior executives find cybersecurity to be a, a big issue for them. And certainly when you look at the risks, and both for the organization and for themselves as, you know, from a liability standpoint, they continue to evolve. So, uh, you know, un, and, and it's not a simple topic, right? It, it, it's filled with complexity and changing business uh, uh, requirements. And on top of that, there's a lot of technology speak, which makes it difficult for people to access and really process it when you're trying to govern that kind of risk. And so I, you know, I hope from this series that we're able to get to a place where we demystify some of the the, the issues and uh, make the make the subject a lot easier for, for executives to handle. Can you give us a bit of uh, insight on how the industry is working? I mean, what is it that they're doing that's failing executives in this space? Yeah, I, I think there's a couple of points. First off, that you know, understanding that that risk is not really well explained when it comes to cyber, because you know, executives are generally pretty good at understanding risk. But when you look at cyber risk, it tends to be very dynamic. We call it asymmetric risk, where the, the outcome is obviously a lot uh, bigger than the potential initial risk. And, and so understanding that it's dynamic, it has to be dealt with on a regular basis, then even a small incident can turn into a very large headache for organizations uh, is, is somewhat of a new concept in risk management, even in the last you know, 10 years. And so, you know, I think that part of the, what I, what I like to refer to is the noise of the industry with all of the stakeholders who have an opinion um, is built off of whatever their, their stake in the industry is. So there's regulators and there are standards bodies and there are consultants and product manufacturers and, and many others, even government. And so many of the messages that they send are, are complex and filled with a lot of buzzwords or, or other words designed to make it difficult to really know how to, how to put it together in context. And without a enterprise security strategy that's developed by somebody who understands all of this, it makes it difficult. It also leads to increased spend, reduced efficiency and effectiveness, and, and I think a general sense of frustration um, by executives that, you know, why is this so hard? And, and at the end of the day, I, I think that, you know, by getting the right advisor who really understands it in context of the business, and I call it ruthless focus on the business, I think that's, that's the beginning of uh, a start for executives to really begin to understand, govern the risk, and, and, and help their leadership teams manage it effectively. So um, one of the points I saw in here, which I, I might need to frame a question better to answer it, is this idea that people are uh, selling uh, solutions and not they're not selling solutions, they're selling products, basically. Yeah, it's a huge problem. Yeah, you said that there's a lot of noise out there in the industry that the executives need to filter through. And um, I imagine that uh, there's some uncertainty as to what is real and what isn't, what they should be listening to and what they shouldn't. Uh, can you unpack that a little more? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to understand that, that the requirements over the last 10 or 15 years to rely on compliance regimes have driven us to purchase products. And products are kind of a 
point in time solution. And they can be put in well, or they can be put in poorly or anywhere in between. And a product may, might meet a certain uh, threshold of usefulness, but that doesn't in itself secure the organization. If you look at every company that's been hacked, they all, you know, in most cases, they had the latest and greatest tools uh, and they were compliant with the latest regimes, but they still got hacked. And why is that? Well, maybe the products were put in poorly or, you know, it's really not about how much you spend as an organization. It's about ensuring they have the right strategy with the right advice. And it's, and it's both, you know, implemented and put in and managed well uh, for the threats that face your specific organization. And, and you know, again, when, when the uh, 3,000 or so manufacturers, you know, in the United States alone are coming at you with messages all the time, products are, are high quality, but is it right for you? And that's what you've got to hear your team has to figure out. I hear you talk about uh, making uh, a, an actual strategy on cybersecurity. And I hear about, um, you know, trying to look at what in particular you need to address in your individual organization. I'm not hearing a lot about budget. Uh, what, what, what can you say about that? Well, I think it's really important to understand that when you're dealing with these asymmetric risks, that that starting out with a would say, here's how much money, because traditional budgeting has always been very linear and very uniform. And understanding that risk changes in, in asymmetric, in this type of asymmetric risk on a day-to-day -day basis, sometimes an hour by hour basis. Looking at it through the same lens um, is gonna be gonna give you suboptimal outcomes. Really what you wanna be able to do is say, what's the risk that faces me at any moment in time? How much risk is, am I prepared to accept as an organization? And does my spend or my effort, it's not everything is about money in this case. Am I, is the program that I put in, is my strategy effective uh, for reducing the risk to my tolerance level? And when you think about it in terms of what you put effort into versus, you know, how much, um, you know, that, that's where the process of prioritization begins. But it's really, you know, it's really critical to understand that that if you say, hey, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mitigate this risk because we don't have budget, then you are by default accepting the risk. And that's okay, as long as you're prepared to accept the risk as an organization. If you're not, then saying it's a budget issue is probably not going to get you to a productive place. Well, speaking of being productive, um, let's let's talk about the board a bit. You know, what is the role of the board in all of this? You know, and the Private Directors Association has done a ton of research in this space, and 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 I think that that you know, take building on what they've uh, produced. I, you know, I think there's a couple of really key points. One, the board has a role to play in governing cybersecurity, both regulatory or or. Uh, or maybe just guidance, which is really what the board is about, but, but also in using that wisdom to be able to, of all the problems they've seen in the past, to say how much risk is okay and what's our role uh, compared to, say, the CEO and the management team. And I think often they tend to, to meld together. But organizations approach this differently. In some organizations, it's a financial target, hey, any, any risk over $50 million, we've got to manage that at the board level. Uh, it's got to be a committee for that. Or in other organizations, it's any risk that impacts our, our name's reputation, our family business, or something of that nature, it's an issue. The key is to define what's right for you as an organization. Set the boundaries and make sure everybody understands their role and responsibility. What are the metrics the board's going to expect? How do you change the report to the board so that it's both bringing you the information you need in a transparent way and getting it in a language that's easy to understand? Often what we see is there tends to be presentations about the technology or the current projects instead of how are we making the business more effective? How are we growing business by reducing cyber? How can we use this as a strategic competitive advantage in our business line against our competitors? And how do we secure our, both our supply chains, our intellectual property lines, 
so that uh, that we maximize the revenue that, that for all the hard work that we're, we're going through. That's great. I, I think we learned a lot today about how to navigate these these waters and, and no, there's a lot more to talk about. So we're going to continue this series and, and try to bring in some more topics that are, are relevant to executives as they deal with cybersecurity needs of their organization. Um, but thanks for tuning in uh, and thanks Dave for, for joining us and giving enlightening us on some of these uh, finer points. Great, Mark. Thanks very much. I appreciate it.